How would you think? What do you think of that one? Very, very, very retro. I like it. It reminds me of my childhood. <laughs> we even got it in the background, kind of like a nice little cityscape in the background. I like it. Very so uh, I'd like to welcome everybody to uh, Water Cooler episode number 33, uh, which is also my last episode ever. Just get it out of the way now, right? Just get it out of I'm invited back as like, some sort of guest. I don't know if that's going to be possible. There will be a surprise at the end of the show. I haven't, I haven't told you yet, but uh, there will be a surprise. Uh oh. So, keep your keep your keep your heart it's ready. Is going to fall on me or get something? Get your heart or? ready. There's balloons. There's someone will come balloons, out. Balloons. A band. A mariachi band going to walk in here. And... Someone's going to come out of the little closet that you have there. And oh, okay. It'll be good content. It'll be good content. That's what we're doing. All here right. For. So, anyway, welcome everybody to uh, the water cooler. I'm working to you live on Wednesday, November 25th. It's 84 degrees Fahrenheit outside. I'm at MPL, and Rudy is at an undisclosed location. I'm off um, a cliff. I see there's birds and there's a lake behind me. Huh. I'm outside. Interesting. He's outside. It's a nice day. A little sunny, but it, nice. it's nice. Very natural lighting right in front of me, too. So Right on. All right, so let's just jump right into it, man. Let's get this let's show on the road. Your last show. You got to take it easy, man. Take it slow. No, no, I just, I want to just, you know, I, I want to enjoy, but also, you know, I want to cruise through it and just have some fun. So you're on cruise control. Got it. Okay. I'm on cruise so, control. So celebrity uh, birthdays. Hit it off with the first one. All right. So we got Mr. Joe DiMaggio, baseball player, of course. Hall of Famer. Hall the, of Famer. He was he used to date he, Marilyn Monroe. Okay, Marilyn that guy. That I did not know until I found uh, his little Wikipedia. Bio. Yeah. Yeah. What was up with that? That was like a whole thing. Well, I mean, if you can imagine, he was like the big sports guy of his day. Right. So you know, of course, he's gonna have like Marilyn Monroe types dating him, wanting to date him. But like, it was like like a tumultuous whole thing like when well, they were she dating and then they broke up Jewish person i think true she had a lot of uh demons and just yeah and then it was also really sad that he would like send roses or flowers to her grave for like 20 years after she had passed very or sad so the rumor oh uh, what's the rumor well i don't know is that was is that really true was it really oh, him no. And then, okay, the last sad thing about this, he sent the flowers every every year to her gravesite, and then apparently his last words were like, now I get to see Marilyn again. Wow. And he was very love-struck, man. He was very in love. Apparently. <sighs> love, I love... Uh, Let's just end this show there. Courageous. That's it. The show's over. Thank you for joining <laughs> us. <laughs> Joe All right, let's move on. So we got Christina Applegate, uh, better known as uh, what was her character's name on uh, Married with Children? Married with Children, I don't know. Something Bundy, that was her last name. Something Bundy, yes. Yeah. So if her, anyone that knows, like, leave, leave a comment. That was like her first acting gig, right? That was her first acting gig. And I think everyone that's more or less around my age, everyone was in love with Christina Applegate. Right. She was our Farrah Fawcett. <laughs> uh, Kelly Kapowski of your uh, of your era. Okay. So we also got Mr. John F. Kennedy Jr., uh, son of, of course, President John John F. Kennedy. He's the one and, that uh, was he's famous the... for being uh, saluting his dad's uh, coffin as, as it was uh, passing by. Yep. What else is he famous for okay. other than being son of a famous? That's pretty much it. Well, he was a publisher, a magazine yeah. or something. Yeah. But what about this last guy? Have you heard of this last guy here? Joey Chestnut. Um, no, I don't think I know who that is. <laughs> Can you figure out what he does, what he's saying? He's a for? competitive food eater. <laughs> he's a competitive food eater, yeah. Yeah, so my brother's in the chat. Yeah, married with children. Kelly, um, Kelly Bundy. Kelly Bundy? <laughs> Kelly Bundy, I think so. Yeah, Joey Chestnut is the champion hot dog eater of uh, of the world. So oh. that's him devouring a hot dog there. How old is he? 
40 something. I don't know. <laughs> I, okay. Well, there are worse things to be doing in your 40s other than <laughs> retiring. Oh, he's not. He's not retiring anytime soon. He's, he's the no. GOAT. All right. Today is also National Play Day with Dad, which makes me feel really bad because I'm here at work instead of home <laughs> with my, my, my toddler. It says encourages fathers to spend the day. Spend the day, Bobby. Spend the day. Trust Focus. me, I'm gonna have plenty of time now that I'm gonna <laughs> be leaving the library and retiring. Focus on fun with their kids. It's a day designed for bonding and memories. Cool. Well, that's gonna be me for the rest of the year. Nice. So it's also National Parfait Day. Nah, not not much for parfaits. I mean, I know they they have them at what like McDonald's is. The, Famous place. I'm not a parfait, parfait kind of guy. Yeah. Let's see. National Shopping Reminder Day, which I guess what reminding you that we got Black Friday coming up and Cyber it's Monday. It's and it's it kicks off the unofficial countdown. Whether you're finishing up or just getting started, holiday shopping is a task that either stresses people or excites them. I'm more yeah. of a stressful kind of shopper. I, I leave it all to the last minute and just buy something. At, hey, I'm the kind of shopper who knows what he wants to buy. So he goes, I walk into the store, I go straight to what the item or items that I need and I leave. Whereas my fiance, she <laughs> walks in and she starts aisle oh, one and around. she goes down every aisle. Uh, and usually she ends up getting stuck on aisle one at HEB because it's the cosmetics and shampoos oh, okay. and all that kind of stuff. So we're there for about 30 minutes before we can even start. Move on. Move on. Can never have enough shampoo though. Shampoo's good. So eh. Eh. and then this last one is a little bit of a throwback. National, National Jukebox, Jukebox Day. Day. As Americans flock to their hometowns for Thanksgiving, many will head out to neighborhood bars and restaurants. They'll catch up with friends and family and celebrate by playing great songs on their local jukebox. Not this year. <laughs> <laughs> also, yeah, it's weird because jukeboxes are still around, right? They're still like yeah, they're Apple digital now. Stuff. Yeah, fact, they're all digital. You can download an app, and then you pay through the app, and you can have the music play at the whatever estab fine establishment you're at. You, whatever fine family friendly establishment that you. One thing at. that I loved, I loved to do back when, when people were actually allowed to go to bars. Or, I mean, not that you're not allowed, but when I was safe, I had a, I had downloaded one of the apps for one of the jukeboxes at one of the local uh, watering holes. Mm -hmm. And what I would do in the evening at around ten o'clock when I knew the place was starting to get packed, I'd be at home. I get on the app. And I'd start putting in really annoying, like I find a really annoying song. Just and a I'd, roll. I'd pay to, for it to play like five times in a row. You're one of those people. You just like to see the world just burn and crumble. Burn, baby, burn. Okay, what's the, what's the annoying song you would put? Uh, it was a Rick Astley. <laughs> the Rick never Roll. Gonna <laughs> never going to let you okay. down. That is upsetting. Upsetting, Rick but not, I'm Rick not surprised. The whole bar. I'm not surprised, but it's upsetting nonetheless. Speaking so, of upsetting. I, there's a tip for all of y'all. <laughs> don't do that. No, don't do that. Okay, here we go. The best inventions of 2020. Were besides, you able to look at this? Besides, we got a premise besides the COVID-19 vaccine. Right, yeah, there's, there's some, uh, that's some medical. That's the best one, I think. There's some medical related ones in here. Let me just kind of sift through them. Um, let's zoom out. So we'll, we'll kind of just stop and to see if something catches our eye. So most of these, uh, a lot of AI stuff for bees here, a bee home. Mm. Mm. A lot of VR stuff. Interesting. And not so much. Okay, beauty. <laughs> Not so much for that one either. Um, streaming. Okay, so this is actually maybe something that we could use here. Hint, hint. Um, but like something superior streaming from Roland, which is like the ones that make like pianos and stuff, keyboards. This is a really legitimate, a legit looking 
streaming. What are those called? Board, like those Power board, 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 board. Yeah. yeah. So I have something very similar to that that I use for my podcast. It's specifically made for for podcasting, which is really cool. And you got pre you, you got pre uh, determined Reset. like buttons that'll like play your intro music. You hit mm -hmm. the other one, it does like an applause, it, whatever you know. An applause. It's pretty cool. That one, yeah, I think that one said it streams to like Twitch, YouTube, Facebook. Uh, so that one's may maybe it's like like video friendly. Uh, let's see here. This one I thought was interesting. This is like a web-based kind of open source college courses. And I think you actually get credit for them. Huh, and they're all cool. they're all through like NYU, Yale, some really good universities. Um an, a really flat TV. I guess they're talking what? about the game so right? So that the new PlayStation 5. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the PlayStation 5. That's like a big Xbox. thing right now, especially with the holidays. People are – there's they're pretty much sold out everywhere if you have, didn't get your order in. Pretty much. Yeah, the pre-order, I think, was a really big letdown for a lot of people because it was like within a couple of seconds, they were a all sold out bots. everywhere. Yeah. So a lot of bots got on their bottom, and then they, they resell them for like crazy amounts. And uh, that, also, that also happens like – if you're a, a connoisseur of tennis shoes, which I know you yeah. are, um, a lot of those apps that you buy tennis shoes off of, there's bots on those also, and they just vacuum up all so that. Can we all agree that bots are ruining the internet? But you like bots. You like the internet and AI well, stuff. I like Russian bots, but <laughs> I'm talking about reseller bots. A portable air purifier? Or, sorry, portable... Portable, portable water purifier. Oh, here, here we go. Parenting for you here. Mm. The crib that what? That calms? The crib that calms. I'm sure it plays music or does something soothing. Well, anyway, we'll leave the list in the in the comments below. Did anything stand out to you, Bobby? No. <laughs> okay, this Can't one actually stood out to me. You know, everyone was so preoccupied with other things this year that I think uh, a lot of these inventions, other than like the, you know, like PlayStation 5, pe most people are going to just not be aware of any of these. Uh, I'm just glad that they to finally have that COVID-19 vaccine. Coming up. All right. So we'll leave this link in the, in the links in the comments below and people can look through it later. Um, yeah, there it is. Time Magazine. Thank you, moderator. So what's the next one? This is the streaming one, right? Correct. So, okay. you know, we've talked a lot about streaming and movies and because of COVID, all, all the theaters being shut down for, for pretty much all summer long. And uh, they're having to figure out new ways to uh, have that, uh, that money rolling in, right? And uh, so they've been narrowing the window between when a movie it's theaters and when it is allowed to stream and it, it, originally it's what like three months and that window got a lot shorter because of covid well now wonder woman apparently is going to hit the streaming service same day it comes out in movie theaters which is this has always been kind of been a dream of mine <laughs> like yeah. i always thought this is where we were headed and here it is. It's happening. It's happening. This is the first. This is like the first big movie, though, right? Like, yeah. The trolls. The trolls one was like for kids, and right? The Mulan one was also. Kind this of is like the first big blockbuster. Yeah. It's gonna do this. Um, I've always said like, I'm willing to pay thirty dollars, whatever to get a first run movie at home in the convenience of home. And now yeah. especially with COVID, heck yeah, I'm all in. Yep. Yeah, I agree. And yeah, this is, hopefully this is something that they see, hey, this is a big hit. Maybe next time we'll do mm, like Netflix. I don't know about Netflix, but like Amazon Prime or like Showtime. Well, and so or, it depends on the movie, um, um, with the movie studio, right? Okay. So since they have a uh, thing with the HBO, 
it's going to go straight to HBO. Ah. Kind of like with Disney Plus, how they did with Mulan, even though that was a little bit different. Oh, I didn't know this was the same the same studio as HBO. Yeah, I think they're owned mm. by the same. So that that's kind of uh, makes sense. Th- yeah, and apparently the movie theaters are okay with it because they've worked out some sort of deal where certain cut. Everyone's getting a cut of all the oh, money. Sure. Made. Let me see here. I'm and again, to look it's, for numbers somewhere. Here. It, even if it's thirty dollars, like. Think about going to the movie theater, right? You yeah. pay for gas, you pay for movie tickets, uh, you pay for popcorn, you pay for drinks. You walk out of there having spent almost $80 for just two people where you can be at home, have all your family for 30 bucks. You can have yeah. any snack you want. You can get up, you can- Have a can of beans. Can of beans. Have your friend, have friends over charge them at the door. Some tofu. We can invite friends over if they're within your quarantine circle. Yeah. yeah. Um, I didn't see any numbers in here, but um, I, yeah, I'm assuming there's a big cut, and I don't see anything about an extra cost. Yeah, it says the movie will be available at no extra cost, which is good because I think the Disney one, the Mulan one, I think was extra. Yeah, you had to pay like nineteen ninety nine, twenty bucks, something like that. Yeah, HBO Max. $15 a month. So if you're willing to spend $15 a month for HBO Max, you're going to get Wonder Woman at your door on your screen. Yep. And this other one I saw, and everyone I think knows what I'm going to talk about here just by looking at the little emojis that I put. Well, so, I mean, and if you think about it, HBO Max, on top of like all the HBO programming, you get Turner Classic Movies, you get Criterion Collection. You get the Ghibli Studio, the Japanese yep. uh, animation. It's a really good value. And I think I they're going to start doing a lot more um, original programming. It's just for HBO Max. Yeah. Plus, you get everything else that's already on HBO. So, yeah, I think that's probably the biggest bang for your buck out of the streaming services. Pretty much, yeah. That and Hulu, I think, is really The only good. thing is Roku is holding out, allowing the app on their platform, which is... I think pretty detrimental to HBO Max, but I, I think they're very close to working out a deal. I wouldn't be surprised if by next week it's it's on Roku. Oh, I would hope so. I think I just got an email earlier that, excuse me, HBO Max is now on Amazon Fire devices. Yep. So they were able to work out their differences. So I'm hoping Ro- uh, Roku's like right around the corner. Roku. Let's get it. Come and on, you know they're going to want to make a deal before this Wonder Woman movie comes out. So, I, 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 like I said, I wouldn't be surprised if they're on there by next week. You heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. Bobby yep. with the insider leaks, with the insider tales. of Heck, it, it'd be smart of them to ha- have it uh, just appear tomorrow. Why not? You know, Overnight. people, uh, Thanksgiving holiday, families hanging out. More and more, yeah, more and more people are just at so, home. So, well, keep your eyes ahead. open. Especially if you have Roku and you're, you've been thinking about getting HBO uh, Max, it's it's coming. Even even for like the 30-day trial, I think it's probably worth it for the next 30 days or so. Oh, yeah. Um, but Netflix says, Netflix, another streaming giant, probably the biggest streaming giant, says Queen's Gambit has drawn over 62 million households to watch Okay, it. so this makes complete sense because on, on uh, social media, like I've been lately, it's all been all this talk about chess. Chess. <laughs> and I was like, what, what are they talking about? Why are people all of a sudden talking about chess? Yeah. But it's apparently this show, is it a limited series or is it a... Uh, I think it, yeah, yeah, most popular limited scripted series ever. I'm sure they'll get another. Well, I don't know. I don't well, know no, if it's limited. It's going to be a one time, one time, and that's it. A one go. The seven episode series ranked the top. And you know, you know what's good about these limited series, because the actors aren't committed to like five years, ten years. They're able to like still go make movies, which means they're able to draw bigger names. Yeah. Um, whereas it would be like a 10-year, five-year contract. 
a lot of the bigger stars would be kind of reluctant to, to you know, commit that kind of time. Yeah, well, yeah, I think it's maybe I'll even give this a shot. I'm not really into chess. Um, I don't play it myself, but I mean, it's got to be good, right? Everyone else is talking about it. Apparently, million people are talking about it. Apparently, I heard someone describe it as the nurse Jackie of chess. Is that from the show? There's a show Misery, called, right? well, there was a show called, no. yeah. No, I've never heard of it. So it's basically about this, well, I, about this one character and her struggles with whatever her demons are. And she apparently she's a chess genius or something. Hmm. I don't think it's based on a true story, is it? I think it might be. See, this is how, how very well uh, prepared we are. Prepared we are. <laughs> I haven't I mean, seen it. I mean, I flew it's... in about, what, 30 minutes ago? Yeah, I got yeah. here. I flew in from Greece. If anyone's and... seen it, no spoilers. Maybe a little. Maybe a little? Maybe a little about the Nurse Jackie thing. Oh, okay. But, uh, yeah, maybe we'll give it a shot and we'll report it. I mean, it. I'm going to have a lot of free time, so maybe I will too. Get in on... Um, of course, I still have to catch up with Mandalorian, so. It's based on a book, apparently. Ah. Okay, so there we We should have known that, Rudy. I should have known. We should have known. If we have it in the library, I'm sure we'll post the, the link to the to the catalog here. Okay, yeah. so this is, ladies and gentlemen, this is Bobby's last story with the water cooler. Yay! And this, this is actually picked by him. And <laughs> this, yeah, this story really tickled my fancy because um, I guess it was in 2019, right? Last year, I they had re-released um, Stanley Kubrick's 2001: A Space Odyssey at, at the local movie theaters. It was on IMAX. They restore. It was a restored edition. I went to go see it. It was like so amazing. It was one of my like most amazing times I've ever had a movie theater. It, I, it was it was amazing. If anyone's seen the movie, they know it's an amazing movie. But having seen a, this restored version on the big IMAX, it was like mind blowing. And yeah. so this for story those, caught my eye because right, for those who doesn't know who don't know what Bobby's talking about, here's the clip of Space Odyssey with the monolith. There you go. So, okay, apparently this was, this is what, in Utah? Utah. Yeah, the Department of Public, let's see. DPS. Department of Public Safety. Oh, DPS, yeah. Yeah, so they were flying, they were flying helicopter over this one area in the, in, I guess, out in the desert, and, and they happened to spot something down below, like in the middle of nowhere, really. So when they they went down and they investigated, they found this monolith looking thing just there in the middle of nowhere. No signs, no nothing. Just it's just there. And of course, right right away, people are thinking, okay, two thousand one Space Odyssey. What is this thing? <laughs> and it's is huge. It aliens? It's like, is it like super fans? What's look going at that. on? It's bigger than. It's almost as big as two grown. Utah male adults. Utah here. man, which is what well, Utah men seem to be pretty tall, right? <laughs> Utah men, it's a new thing. <laughs> so it's probably about twelve feet, maybe. Yeah. I, I'm thinking it's going to be. Do you think? I don't know. No one's come. No one's come forward and said, "Look, we placed it there. We created this." It could be a work of art. It could be uh, what do they call those in installation? Um, art installation. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think it's cool. I think it's really cool. Yeah, I think it's really well made. It looks nice and smooth. But I think it's gonna be something like, yeah, I put it there. Like it's like, like Ban, like you know that Banksy. that artist Ban Bansky. Banksy, yeah. Ban yeah, ba yeah. So maybe it's somebody like that. Because it looks very smooth. It looks like something that's straight out of like an iron plant. I don't know, or a metal plant. Now there are already the rumors that it's you know conspiracy minded people that it's aliens and they're trying to send us a message because 2020 was such a tumultuous <laughs> year. This is just a sign. They're messing with us, man. Impending doom or in, in, impending invasion or impending something. 
it, it's impending the fun is now maybe it's impending just like hey have a good time like live life to the fullest here's a here's a monolith have fun I don't know. so okay if you remember in the movie there it is it's it, there it, it's supposed to be in prehistoric times and all of a sudden this monolith appears and of course they start going crazy what is this thing they started attacking it and then boom it jumps to the future right so i don't know it, it, who knows what it could mean i think hope oh, i mean i think it's just going to be someone's going to come out banksy's going to say hey 2020 this is my banksy piece welcome to like welcome to banksy are you willing to make a prediction yes Predict something that this monolith is going to bring what with it? I think this monolith is a Banksy art installation. Someone's going to come up. Maybe it's not Banksy. Maybe it's someone from Utah, Utah man, Utah art man, Utah art woman, Utah art person. They're going to come out and they're going to say, hey, this is my art installation. Do you like it? And I'm going to say, yeah, thank you. You're gonna say yeah, thank you. I'm gonna say yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you for the for the monolith. Like it, it kind of distracted us from whatever's going on. Thank you for the monolith. Publicity stunt, yeah, publicity stunt. So uh, maybe, so maybe it's it, whoever created. Maybe the message of sending is there's hope in the future because of course this year has just been it's been what it is, right? Yeah. And this monolith. There's hope in the future, but hope through humanity and hope through science, right? I like that. So yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with that. Put your put your faith in science. Put our faith in science. Put our faith in medicine. Yeah, maybe it's a publicity stunt from like Pfizer or one of these. <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> what's the name? The Windows guy. Uh, Bill Gates. Bill Gates. <laughs> you know, it'd be cool. Like all of a sudden, well, there's, you know, I'm pretty sure there's now a camera like watching at all times, right? At, it's just one day it, it starts it. opening up. Okay. And guess who comes out? Elon Musk. No, better. I don't know. Hawking. Stephen Hawking. Back from the dead. Stephen or Hawking. Or was he really Palmer. dead? Literally. <laughs> So that was our He's like, last I've come back from the future. I've got a message to tell you all. <laughs> Let us know what you think in the comments. We already got someone saying that it's a publicity stunt. I think it's an art installation. Bobby thinks it's the aliens talking to us <laughs> uh, via Stephen Hawking's regenerated corpse. But uh, that was our last story together, Bobby. What did you think? That was a good well, one. Well, I, I had fun, like always, but that was a great story, too. And my so my illustrious career here at the library and on this podcast. So you've been at the library over twenty years. Over twenty years. So I began as a part timer back 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 when the library was located near downtown on Main Street, and I was a part timer for not a, maybe less than a year. I became full time, and then from that moment on, it's been twenty years. Wow. It's been a long and winding road. And I've only ever called in sick twice. Look at that. Round of applause right I've here. Never been late to work. <laughs> I've never made any excuses. I've been here 40 hours a week, that. every week for 20 years. Do the math. Shine, Someone do the snow, math. Sleet or hail to floods. He's always here. He's helping all the patrons. He's teaching us stuff. Bobby taught us all stuff here at the library. He teaches librarians. He teaches reference assistants. He teaches part-timers, everyone. Bobby, there's Everybody. a surprise for you in your closet in the, the pink box that you have your laptop on. Yeah. There's a second one in the closet. Can you go and get it? Are you don't, kidding don't, right now? No, I'm not. Go ahead. Don't, sure? don't, don't peek into it yet. Bring it in front of you, and then I'll let you can do it on stream for content. All right, hold on. let me take my mic off real quick. Okay, go ahead. So Bobby doesn't know that I'm giving him a gift here. He doesn't know what these gifts are. Don't look into it yet. 
Okay. Putting my mic back on. This is for the content. Okay, reach. There's two items in there. Reach one at a time and pick one Here's at a time. Here's a box. Yeah. There's two in there. Pick out just one. Okay. Ta -da! Oh. Among the Thugs by Among Bill thugs. Buford. So can you tell everyone why I got that for you? So this has to do with soccer, English, hooliganism. Hooliganism. Bobby is the epitome, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Listen to me when I say this. Off the clock, when he, where he's away from work, Bobby is a hooligan for the RG, RGVFC Toros, the local semi-pro team here at the, Stampede. At the RGV. He's part of the Stampede, and that's why I'm giving VP, him VP, actually. <laughs> All, All right, right. Let's, let's... Pick up the second one. Wait, why is it moving? It shouldn't be moving. I, I killed it already. Oh. I got something in here. Here we go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I am Zlatan. The, my story on and off the field, or... We should call it the pitch. Zlatan Ibrahimovic. International bestseller. Wow, I didn't know that. So this guy is one of the, well, at least in modern football, one of the greats. Yeah. Uh... And he knows it too. He'll let you know. He, oh, yeah. He'll let you know he's one of the greats. So these are books that I already had. I wasn't going to read them. I said, you know, Bobby would appreciate it more. So that's why I'm giving them to you. So here's a little uh, interesting tidbit about Slatan. Well, not really about him, but just uh, before the pandemic or whatever, uh, my my parents and my sister had gone to L.A. And on their flight back or on, anyway, they were at the airport in L.A., I think. And my sister sends me a picture it's my dad. They're sitting there waiting the board, right? And right in front of him, walking by, looking at the kid, it's Slatan. Wow. My sister's like, I think this guy's famous because everyone's making a big deal out of him. We're here at the airport. And she sends me a picture. And I was like, oh, my God, that's Slatan. I guess that was when he was playing for the uh, LA uh, no. Galaxy. Yeah. Jesus. So um, I was like, did you talk to him? Oh, my God. I like, I, I, was, I was fanboying big time. Yeah. And of course, she's like, oh, I don't know who he is. A thousand miles <laughs> away, fanboy. So Sorry. now you could fanboy at your house while you read um, two soccer related books. That's it. That's all I got. You. Two, yeah, those oh, are, that's it. Two soccer related books for Bobby for his retirement gift. Um, what do you think, Bobby? Yeah. Thumbs up. I'm going to start with this one. That way I, I can read up on my hooliganism for <laughs> next season. And I'm going to read this one second. <laughs> Speaking of soccer, though. I do want to bring something up that's a little bit sad. Well, it's a lot sad. We know 2020 has brought a lot of uh, uh, a lot of sadness to a lot of people. It's been uh, one of those years. A lot of people are just like, I can't wait for 2020 to be over. What else can happen? We still have a, a month and a half, or a month to go. But today, today, this very day, we lost a legend. Sporting legend, a soccer legend, the GOAT, the man, the hand of God, Diego Maradona. Diego Armando Maradona. He died today, heart attack, age of 60. And that one hits kind of hard. But um, it just goes yeah, he, know, he led a very, uh, it, was a, it, was a, it was a glorious life, but a very, very rough, rough, rough life. Let me see. And they're caught up to him. And here is Maradona at his best. This is a very soccer themed episode where we apologize, but I don't apologize. I love soccer. I love football. It just happened. This I is, love this is, this is, is how this you say one of his one of his famous goals. The hand of God goal, where he sticks his hand up right before the goalie is able to knock it out. And he puts it in the net. He puts it in there. And yes, it was a very dirty play, but only only it. he, only he, someone like him, only it's, someone it's like the him. Ultimate the ultimate um troll move. Like it's <laughs> it's awesome. You gotta love it. 
and this is probably his most famous goal versus England. This is England. such a good goal. Look at the way he goes around those guys. Just goes around. This is England he's playing against. This is not no, you know, no. Careful who, what country you say. That's <laughs> England. This isn't yeah. against like, you know, United States. Men's I knew you were going to say that. But uh, <laughs> that was against England. So rest in peace. Rest Diego in Armando peace, Maradona. Diego Maradona. And by the way, there's, speak of streaming, there's a documentary about him uh, from 2019, from last year, that's streaming on, I think it's on a few platforms like Hulu, Amazon Prime, HBO Max. So I'll be watching that this weekend. All right, I think I think that's it for this for this week, Bobby. Your that's last it. your last hurrah. Thank you for uh, you. You're the mind behind the water cooler, right? This is your idea. Ooh, a long time ago, you've been wanting to do a podcast. I've been life. wanting to do a podcast for a really long time, and then COVID hit, and we were forced to make uh, this kind of content. And well, here we are. Kind of stuck. Cool. So uh, thank you, Bobby, for for being here with us one last time. Congratulations on your retirement. Best wishes from everyone here at MPL. Um, any parting words you wanna you wanna send out to the people? Just uh, keep the show. I hope this show keeps going and keeps getting better and better and better. I'm gonna miss all of you guys, everybody, all my coworkers, um, people I've, I've I've made friends with, uh, some of our patrons who are like just our regulars. Shout out to them. And uh, I've seen a lot of people come and go. I guess it's my turn and um, you know, you'll, you'll see me again someday. And for those of you who want to like keep up with what's going on with me, um, just look for Bobby Inc. I'm everywhere. Uh, so, on, on all social media, like YouTube, everywhere. Man. Bobby Inc. Bobby Inc. Yeah. All right. Well, signing off. I'm Rudy. I'm Bobby. One last time. Everyone have a good rest of your day. Take it easy. Wash your hands. Stay safe. Be safe.